is RT International. Julian Assange recently gave an interview to an Italian news outlet from inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London. And while there were no big revelations, some have used the opportunity to brand Assange again as a Moscow stooge. In an article posted online about the interview, The Guardian pointed out that the whistleblower used to have a program here on RT International, alleging that he therefore had a very close relationship to the Putin regime. Well, the tactic of using ties to Russia as part of a smear campaign against prominent figures is nothing new. And when confronted with stories that do not fit their narrative, the mainstream media often tries to distract their audiences with all sorts of tactics, as Miguel Francis Santiago explains. It seems that lately the media out there have been quick to put labels on anyone who poses a so-called uncomfortable story. So what's a comfortable story? Oh, perhaps Obama's exit interview, an easy boasting opportunity, or winter swimming in Finland. Now that's easy to cover, right? But when Julian Assange releases one of the hottest and most devastating leaks on Hillary Clinton and the Democratic National Convention, he's instantly labeled a Russian agent. He's labeled a useful idiot to Putin because he appeared on RT. He is labeled a prop for Trump or Putin's puppet because apparently the information he released was damaging for Hillary Clinton. And in the end, the focus moves from a sensational story to the labels. Just like Rex Tillerson, Trump's pick for U.S. Secretary of State. And anything Trump is uncomfortable, right? So let's label him Putin's pal for having done business in Russia because he deals with oil and Russia happens to be one of the biggest exporters in the world. Now we can further put a label on him for getting a Russian order of friendship, for expanding business between the two, thus bolstering both economies. But Trump's team are not the only political pariahs. Europe's got figures like Norbert Hofer, Marine Le Pen, Pepe Grillo and many others who are exposing what they see as the biggest problem the EU is facing today, the migrant crisis. They all say Brussels is responsible, and that's exactly the mainstream media's problem with them. So, in a nutshell, if you're dealing with an uncomfortable topic, all you got to do is simply cover it with labels so much that you can't see the actual story behind it. I'm Miguel Francis Santiago, RT. More than two-thirds of Germans want to see major changes to security and immigration policy. That comes from a new poll conducted after last week's deadly assault on a Christmas market in Berlin, and believed to have been carried out by a Tunisian migrant. However, the president of the European Commission is urging people not to overreact. It would be wrong to place all refugees under a general suspicion of terrorism. Anyone who still resorts to the rhetoric of exclusion allows himself to think like an extremist and fuels their spiral of hate. Our values, our way of living together in freedom, coexistence and openness are the best weapons against terror. Janko was addressing calls to rethink the Schengen free border zone spanning most of Europe. Now, the lack of border checks has again come under scrutiny after the Berlin suspect travelled freely from Germany to Italy where he was killed in a shootout with police. Anis Amri is known to have crossed at least two state borders despite being the target of a Europe-wide manhunt. He somehow managed to travel more than a thousand kilometres from Berlin to Milan using public transport. Train tickets were found on his person showing that he did pass through the French city of Lyon. The failure to stop him at any border has triggered widespread criticism. 